my name is Amari Warren with GlideFast Consulting, and today we're going to go over inbound actions a little. Why would you want to use inbound email actions? You might want to use them to do something simple, like create a record, update a record, something like that, trigger another email or notification uh, to approve a approval request, maybe reject it, something like that. The one thing I want to emphasize is that you want to keep your inbound actions for simple tasks and things within the system. If you have one, someone trying to do something complicated, I would strongly advise for you to guide them to use the system and the tool for what it is. You don't want to do anything too complicated with that. And one of the reasons being is you don't want to get stuck in a position where you're giving complicated instructions to users that are hard to remember and difficult to follow. Uh, you also don't want to do it because you don't want to risk bogging down the system uh, with complicated scripts and things like that hitting the database. So like I said before, you want to keep things simple. If you have a request or business requirement to do something complicated, I strongly advise that you guide the users to the systems and show them the benefits of actually using the tool because that's that's what it's here for. We want to keep things things simple. So with that being said, uh, inbound actions are a great tool for, for doing simple things that you may want to do when you don't have access to, to the tool. Maybe you're on your phone, maybe you're away from the office, things like that. So some of the things that you can do with an email inbound action, you can record certain things through the record. You can trigger, also trigger replies uh, to users with those. So one of the conditions are based on the type. Is it a new email, a reply, or a forward, you being forward or something to the system? And one thing that I want to mention is when you're developing these and wanting to test them, make sure you have the outbound email configuration set and the inbound email configuration set with a and this right here with a email address where you can use to actually test your work just be sure that when you change this you change it back once you're you're done working or doing whatever you have to do with inbound actions how does it recognize an email that's meant for a certain certain record like let's say this incident right here so when the system sends out an email to a user, there's something called a watermark. So when a user is replying with that watermark, the system recognizes that and knows that they're replying to that. And it also recognizes the user by their email address in the system. One option you have with inbound actions is to stop processing other inbound actions. Sometimes you don't want to trigger a cascade of other inbound actions or emails going out to the user. If let's say a user sends an email to the system to cancel a request, you don't want to process, you might not want to process uh, other emails after that. So you would check this stop processing checkbox to keep that from, from happening. And you can also, let's say you do want certain inbound actions to process, but when it gets to this one, you want it to stop you can define that with the execution order. So if you have emails with a higher order than this, they'll actually process. And once it gets down here and you have this checkbox chat, it'll stop processing that. And you can also set certain conditions. You can see down here, like uh, if there's something in the body, it's created by a certain user, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that way you can kind of control the traffic within the system and filter out uh, certain emails that you don't want want to process as well using those conditions. You can also set it by certain roles. Maybe you only want managers to be able to do that. You can assign that role to managers and this inbound action will only trigger if that manager or user has say the a manager role. Now let's go over here to the actions. Over here, when you're developing an inbound email action, you can set certain fields when you're creating a record. This one's creating an instant. So you can set the caller ID to the user that's sending the email. You can add comments to it. You can set the short description, et cetera, et cetera. And like I said, you want to keep 
keep this simple. If someone's trying to do something too complicated, like, you know, if this user's sending from this email address and the body has 1,000 words of text, then send an email to say their manager, their vice president, et cetera. So you really don't want to do that. Again, direct them to the tool to use that. You don't want this script getting too complicated. Like I said, it's difficult for the developer. You run the risk of uh, introducing defects and constantly having to work on this. And there's gonna be a fairly high learning curve when you're trying to train users on how to use this and what they need, what information they need to keep in the email or providing the email to trigger certain actions. So keep that in mind, keep this simple. And you can also set, do a simple, instead of scripting, you can actually set field values here. And over here is a description of what the inbound action does. I'm not gonna go through this, but the developer can put a description here, or if you're using one of the out of, box, out of the box inbound actions, there's usually a description over here for, for the user to use. Now, I already test this myself for this demo, so you don't have to wait on me to send that out and wait on a reply. So you can see over here, I sent the email to the system. And before I get there, let's say you are trying to create an inbound action and you want to access something, but you don't know quite how to get to it. You may want to search the header. Search the header or code for the header because if you're looking for something that you know is in there, like uh, let's say the email went out to multiple users and you're trying to code based on that, that information is usually in the header if it's not in the subject or body. So just keep that in mind when you're developing that. Back to uh, the email I sent to the system, uh, I wanted to create an incident. So essentially I sent in an email to this developer instance, subject a test incident, and this has the body information, headers, content type, and we're gonna go ahead and preview that. You can see that I just sent, this is just a test email. What that did, it was it created this incident right here. You can see that it set the short description. It shows that I sent the email and what was in it. Let's see, is there anything else in here? No, there's not, but you can set all these fields if you need to. But as you, as you can see, it matched up to my email address. I have a user account here. Uh, and once it recognized me, it created this incident. And if we go back, to that email, not that one, this one right here, you can see all the inbound actions and scripts that is skipped down here. And you can also attach email attachments to the record. And you can see the system replied with a notification, which isn't really related to this, but Trigger one out because of the email that I sent down. And I think uh, that's about it. Like I said, we wanna go ahead and remove that email address once we're done, save it. And like I said, you can get the inbound actions under system policy, email, inbound actions. We're gonna go ahead and leave there. And here's just a preview of some of the inbound actions that you can create or that have been created out of the box. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it.